today on AMSMR, we're going to eat Taco Bell. Hello. So. Oh, we're doing it? Yeah, we should do it. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this, this week's going to be our SHOT Show Asked Amped. And you got Kurt. Chris. Just Chris. Yeah. Just Chris. Okay. Is anyway. there another name that um, I should be using? No. Not that <clears throat> But anyway, this week uh, we're going over stuff from SHOT Show. We just got back. For those of you uh, who are just tuning in and aren't familiar with this, um, Ask Stamped is a question and answer show where you guys ask questions and we answer them. I, we oh, got man. real sick at, yeah. at SHOT Show. So just, just a forewarning, <clears throat> the best thing we got from SHOT is death. We are pretty sick. Um, that's what happens when you're yeah. in a room with like 10,000 people. Uh, <coughs> so, apologize up front. But we'll go ahead and pick our first question. <coughs> Element Virus 76. There's a virus there. Bada bang. Honest opinion on the new EMG 9mm jack. Hmm. I mean, I haven't, I've seen them. I don't really. Actually, I can refresh myself. I was gonna say, I've never held one. Um, Are you pulling it up? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've had I've had one of the, the EMG jacks before. Um, I mean, it's a s standard, you know, like Aries Amoeba internal, I believe. Maybe? Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure that um, it is. So. <clears throat> it has a pretty good, uh, it has a pretty good turnover. Um, you know, I like them. Um, I know a lot of people were confused that when it when it came out, they thought it had like a jack unit in it, but it just has to do with the skull that's on the thing. Or maybe we're talking about a totally different gun. I I'm not really sure, but it seems like that's I seems like that's the one. I mean, the system's good. I, I've never seen the gun itself, but the system's good. Um, I know it can run an 11.1 out of the box like most stuff these days. So, um, fairly decent body. You know, the the, the EMGs are good guns. Um, I haven't used a whole lot in my life, but I've never really had any issues with the ones that I have. Yeah, for the most part, I mean, all of the EMG series, like as far as the jacks go, are going to be very comparable. The only difference is literally going to be magazine. Um, so... Yeah, that's sort of our honest opinion on it because we don't really have an opinion on it. Um, but based on their previous ones, they're decent. So um, I think as far as HPA installs, if I'm not mistaken, there's a little bit of weird... Yeah, they're a little tricky. Hmm, excuse me, a little bit of uh, weird stuff with the trigger board. So if I'm not mistaken, I think they're based on the Aries. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. So because of that, you have to get an Aries-type board. Not that you're going to buy this and <coughs> put an HPA unit in it, but just saying. Um, so, next question. Justin Mahoney says, recommendations on must-haves of 2019. Uh, Dayquil. 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 Sudafed. Um, Warm blankets. This would be in regards to SHOT Show. As far as, like, things coming out, um, you have the Odin slash PTS collab mag coming out, which is, like, a 200-plus round mid-cap. That's really cool. Um, definitely want to check that out. Uh, the Odin Transformer speed loader. Oh yeah, that was yeah. dope. Like, okay, I just want to say this right now. Everybody was super stoked about about the mag. It is something to be smoked, smoked, stoked about. But that speed loader with the bottle adapter, they gave me the jimmies, man. I was pretty excited about that. Um, that's definitely gonna be a must-have because then, you know, the only issue with that that I saw was like. A lot of people carry their their speed loaders like their Odins on the field with them. There's no, it's it's awkward if you do that with a bottle. Yeah, it is sort of yeah. So I think <clears throat> for those of you not familiar with the transformer, if you haven't seen it yet, they essentially took an Odin and they took the the main internal part, like, like the guts stripped of it. it down. Yeah, they stripped it all down, and they have all kinds of different attachments to it. So instead of having like a full size Odin, you could have like a literally just the winding part of it and on that you could put like a bottle um, adapter or you could you know put that on like to like a cloth bag is what they were talking about so that way you have like a a reservoir um, that's easier to put places than say this the speed loader 
Um, but you can literally take any part of it, make it bigger, smaller, change out adapters. Um, They're gonna have an adapter series. In magazine, too. Yeah, yeah, like change out the magazines uh, for it. <clears throat> so that's something cool coming out. Uh, the uh, uh, oh god, a lot of people asked about the GNG, the GNG um, pistols. Mm-hmm. Um. I guess, like, sneaking one of those into your kit wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I know Elite Force has a bunch of stuff coming out. Like, they have the Glocks coming oh, out. Yeah, They're dude. releasing their... They have, a, they have Coyote, the, R, the R8, which is based off the Smith & Wesson. Um, they just acquired the Smith & Wesson license, so they, like, are going to have a bunch of cool stuff coming from that. So, like, anything... So they, they're, I think they're doing, like... A new T4E series that looks pretty cool. I'm not sure on that. Yeah, there's like uh, some bad guy guns. But um, lots of Glocks. They lots have all of the Glocks. Glocks. So many Glocks. All the MP stuff. <clears throat> um, the MP7, the AEG coming out. Uh, the MP5 is being redone. So now they have the MP5 with the Avalon gearbox in it that's the, uh, non burst. So the that's going to be 416 sweet. Delta. That they that they just rolled out looks pretty good. With the, yeah, the, the gas blowback, the recoil action, you know. So, um, so yeah, those there's are a couple. Yeah, there's like some hot stuff coming out. Um, also, like a big recommendation, and this is sort of like something that in our last episode I admitted I'm sort of like geeky about. But um, True Spec is actually coming out with a, an ATAX FG. Well, a whole like ATAX series that they're working with the people who came up with ATAX to like do this whole line of, like, chess rig and BDU and combat shirt that is, like, oh, it, it looks really good. Um, yeah. Condor also. They're not allowed to call it a... Uh, combat shirt. They're not allowed to call it a combat shirt because I guess that's licensed by Cry, but um, <clears throat> they have, like, a like a battle top that's coming out, and it's going to have, like, the rubber... <clears throat> um, it's essentially a soft-shell battle top. Yeah. It's... Uh, cool. That looks... Super baller. The uh, Orion, definitely something to pick up. New packs. Yeah, new packs from, like, 5.11. I was going to say, <coughs> so that's a good idea of, like, what's coming out. But if you want, after this video and sometime here within the next couple weeks, we'll probably have some SHOT Show videos coming out. So make sure to check out those, and it'll be, like, videos of the booths, uh, the booths that we saw. Um <clears throat> And then also pictures and everything like that. So definitely keep an eye out for that. But I think we should move on. Yeah. Um, okay. Alex Stortz asked, best looking booth babes and coolest non-airsoft thing you saw. I did not see a whole lot of booth babes. No. I saw a lot of dudes. No. Dude, the one thing I saw in Vegas, like nonstop at SHOT Show, was <clears throat> shirts with the Second Amendment on it in some way or another. Like it was like an, like I saw this one. It was this couple. He had the. It was like a wicked mullet, and it was an American flag. And the mullet then, or a shirt? Well, the, no, the, his shirt. His shirt had an American flag. There was eagles on it, and on the back it had the Constitution. Sounds about. And right. his wife had the same exact deal. Like mullet, same shirt. They're both wearing the same. I was like, are you guys twins, or do you just plan this? I just, but yeah, he was the best booth babe I saw. Um, but yeah, there was like a lot of, there was like a lot of, like a lot of old men instead of booth babes, you know? Coolest non-airsoft thing that I saw, it was probably somewhere between those Walther trucker caps that, or the uh, Team Wendy mandible like. <clears throat> motorcycle helmet looking thing that they had it was like it you have the face guard you have the ballistic rating you know um specs all built into one i'd but, say probably the one thing i saw well actually there's two things uh magpul was handing out gold magpuls uh we missed that they ran out um we didn't realize it until afterwards so those were pretty cool i saw some images on instagram about that but the other cool thing, the non-airsoft one, which is sort of airsoft, <laughs> but we went to the Smith Optics booth, and they had thermal Smith Optics lenses. And I was like, oh, man, what are those? When are they coming out? Like, I knew what they were. 
And they're like, well, nope, this is some spook stuff. Like, you can't get these. We're not selling them to anybody. They're literally end user in the sense of, like, special forces and whatnot. So I wish they'd come out with them. I talked to him a good bit, and he said, well, maybe in the future. But that would that was probably the coolest thing because, like, if they came out with those, I'd make that goggle, like, completely unstoppable. So, yeah. but Because that's what we need. Yeah. Unstoppable goggles. Yes. <clears throat> Tom Sarasso. Hey, he's just in here. Uh, what will the new Odin Transformer work on, and how many BBs can fit in the reservoir? It'll work on everything, everything. and it'll hold as many as you can imagine. Yeah. So they really didn't, they don't have, like, a bunch of information on it, other than, you know, if you want, like, it'll obviously have the normal size reservoir if you would build it that way. Excuse me. <clears throat> but if you would make it smaller, then obviously it's going to be smaller. Um, and then some of them, like, you could actually make it so that it has no reservoir, so it's very small. Um, so, but yeah, it'll pretty much work on everything. Uh, they're aiming to have it adaptable to pretty much any mag uh, without an adapter, I believe. You know what I was thinking about? So. We have all those those BB bags that'll attach to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We we'll to make some bundles. Maybe we can get rid of those. <laughs> finally get rid of them. Yeah. So. All right. <clears throat> Odin really had a lot of hotness this year. Yeah, yeah. Tipman's also. They're making a new. Oh Odin yeah, they too. are partnering with Odin. Um, so that that'll be out. It's an Odin speed loader uh, that comes with the buffer already installed in it, and it's a collab between him or Tipman and Odin. So it's yeah. pretty cool. Ian Leary, Gun Gamers, uh, what are you most excited for personally that was shown at Shot Show? We're gonna get like a lot of iterations of this question. And I'll try to like I'll try to come up with like a bunch of different exciting stuff, but straight up, uh, those, um, the the plate system or the panel system from Pantac. Oh yeah. And, and HRT. That was that. that was pretty cool. Those are cool. Uh, like, so, like they look like they'll fit on anything, and then they even come with a set of buckles. So if you have like let's say that you run like a Samapo or you run like uh, you know something. Something a little funky, maybe an AVS or like an Armatus. That, that was another thing, LBX. That was pretty cool. But but like these, you you can like take the clips off and then throw another set on there. So that's yeah. So essentially, you had like, um, you could swap out different parts of the plate carrier. Uh, so that way you could run like, you know, you could literally change like, oh, I don't want this anymore. Take it off, put another one on, and all of a sudden it's a different use. And the same with the bottom. And I think they did that for front and the back. And they also had packs that did that too. So that was really cool. It'll be interesting to see where that goes. Shot Show was like a blur for me. There's a lot of work, a lot of running around. Um, and I'm always having trouble like remembering everything I saw. But uh, a lot of gambling, lost the farm. Yeah, the lost whole the whole damn thing. Warren lost the farm. Yeah. It's so. over. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Um, PTS has a really cool stubby, like, GNP VN uh, M4, or rifle, not M4, AR-15. Uh, so that's really cool. We're actually thinking about doing a pre-order for them, but they're, like, literally, like, this big. It has, like, a stubby, probably a four-inch barrel on it with a, a handguard. Um, that was really cool. And the GLBS is sort of cool. I know we're sort of excited. Dude, you, you like, one. lost your mind on those GMR packs, man. Oh yeah, the, you I mean, were like the GMR I thought pack you were... was really cool. Uh, Ronan put together a pack for like a dual um, sixty-two three thousand setup, so that was really cool. And I got to hold his uh, GNP Stoner uh, support gun, and that thing is like pff, the coolest thing ever. It's so light, I think, stocks cut, barrels cut. I think we also figured that you've been wearing toe shoes longer than he has. I have. Yeah, I so have. I think so. I didn't actually get to ask him. No, he said he said it was like something like seven years. Was it? So I don't know. I've been wearing toe shoes for freaking ever. Although right now my feet are frozen because it is literally four degrees out. Any PR fifteen pro news? Oh. Yeah, dude, I got to hold one. Uh, I watched a guy from uh, Germany drop one on the ground. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they are like there was there was like a lot of excitement about them. <clears throat> um, there's like a, a lot of highlight on the uh, the UGS and the UCS. Not a whole lot that like could sort of be discussed. 
Because there was, yeah. it, there was like, it was, it was like, here you go. Like, and then you hold it and they were like, can we open it? And they were like, no. Yeah. So, so there, there's still, <laughs> there's no like 100% release date for it. So they're still doing their thing with it. Um, so there's really no new news, but other than they're getting closer. So they are and pretty that, nice. They're, and they're that like dude dropped nice. it and it still worked, man. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so the body and everything on them is like really good. Um, just everything about it is very high quality. Um, I just don't know. We don't know when they're coming out. So I'm Mike Mercado. I saw the first PTS Masada ERG prototype in a video from Shot Show 2016. Then during one of their live streams from last year's Shot Show, I asked the PTS rep if he thought it would be produced, and he said probably not. Have you guys heard any rumors on it? And if you had to guess, do you think it will ever be made? I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Either. I mean, I saw they had uh, they had the Masada, Masadas right? there, but they weren't. They were gas. Um, so I don't think that's a currently a thing. At least they didn't say anything at all. So one of the things about like PTS is that they sort of like have a lot of cool things cooking, and you know, like this is really to be said about like all of the industry is like you get some stuff cooking and then something happens that you can't foresee that you know you end up having a shift and like a lot of cool stuff comes out of it yeah. you know so so I mean we could see it you know in the next couple of years we could see it you know come summer or we could never see it but I can tell you what that some of the systems that they pulled off of it or you know what have you more than likely will pop up they do have I mean speaking of uh, ERG <clears throat> they do have some Centurion the CM4. new CM4s essentially coming out. So that'll be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Next question. <laughs> you Get that us. baby under control out there. Yeah, we got my dog in the background. John Burt, 14, asks, With all the 9mm AR platforms coming out, what will be the best one to get for out-of-the-box performance? MOSFET, Hop-Up, RELS. Um, I'm looking for a, a lightweight CQB gun to put a light and grip on. So with that one, one of the coolest things coming out, and I actually pulled up on my phone here, uh, they had a prototype gun at KWA that looked really sweet. Um, it's a KWA QRF Mod 1, and you'll be able to see this on some videos we do later as well. We definitely plan on carrying it, but it's an SMG. It takes like a nine mil style mag, sort of like an MP5, but it is a proprietary mag to that gun. Uh, it has the typical, like, the like a Crytac PDW folding stock or a sliding stock on it, and then it has a shorter front end with M-Lock, cool flash hider, flip-up sights, and actually we can probably flash a picture of it whenever we edit this, so that way you'll be able to see it. But that gun is really cool, got to hold it, and it's pretty solid. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of reminded me of, like, it sort of had this, like, MP5. Yeah, it's very MP5-esque. Yeah, it's, and which is cool because, like, you don't see, like, there's a lot of kits for MP5s, but you don't see, like, a cool MP5 straight out of the box. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, you know, which is always fun. All right. <clears throat> Justin Mahoney asks, best part about SHOT Show. Uh, how about you go ahead and tell yours first? I'd say best part is like just meeting everybody. Uh, we spent a lot of time with the reps, spent a lot of time with other you know airsofters, people like some of our dealers that we deal with. Uh, Harrison at ASG is amazing. He actually took us to In-N-Out Burger, and we went and played uh, Smash in his apartment or his uh, hotel. And sort of hung out with them. That's probably why we're sick, because he was sick. He was day like, one. He was like on the verge of, of collapsing. Yeah. But I will say, I took the uh, the owner of ASG to the ground on uh, Super Smash at the booth last day that we were there. And yeah. it's pretty proud of that. So probably not gonna be able to sell ASG guns anymore, guys. Sorry about that, but you know, pride's still intact. Got to hold tight, you know. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's about it. Like we got to. Uh, go hang out at Top Golf with One on One Tech. We went to an Elite Force dinner the first night out. Uh, hung out with ASG. So my my the best part about Shot was probably the discovery of 
dog goggles for me. Oh, that was that dogs have goggles and they have fans in them too. That was probably that and um, uh, probably Eric Coward knocking into Lou Ferrigno. Oh, walking through the uh, to the the thing. But yeah. Um, all right. Oh, Justin Mahoney again. again. Opinion on G and G pistol lineup. I, you know, I I gotta admit, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time like that. Like that's the one I get all the time. It's like, what's the G and G lineup looking like? Right? And I was like, well, I'd seen a lot of this stuff in California, but then also I was more interested in the PR fifteen that was you know smacking yeah. me in the face. So because we got to see that at EviteCon, we got to shoot some of them. Uh, they have a polymer type pistol with a, sl- a polymer slide, and then they have the metal ones as well. Um, I definitely like the, the, the full metal ones better. We didn't get to really shoot them too much. I mean, it was just sort of what you'd expect from a pistol. Uh, overall, I like the design of them. They actually have some cool ones coming out that are, the structure of them is a little different, like the look and the style of it. So a lot of people are probably looking forward to that. So yeah, I'd say not, not too much to report on those. You gonna let me do one there, bro? Oh, sorry. Like the third one. I'm just third one in a row. Just running through, yeah. Call sign kickback. What's your honest <laughs> opinion on the new PTS midcaps? I'm assuming you're talking about the Odin PTS uh, collab. They are pretty sweet. I know right now they they have over 200 rounds in them. I know he was saying that they're like, you know, in their prototype stage they hold more because they're doing a lot of testing. So. You know, technically they have like 250 rounds in them, but by the time they release them and refine it and everything and make sure the feeding's correct, they're, they're saying like 200 plus. Uh, so it'll be less less than 250. Um, they look like an EPM. They have a, a like the follower has a, like a mag level on it. So as the magazine empties, it actually tells you how full or empty the mag is. So that's really cool. And they're very stylistic, so I mean they they look nice. So I'm looking forward to them. It's cool because it, you know they were like 200 plus rounds. Um, Jordan from Odin, he's he's an awesome dude, and he's so innovative. It's gonna be like what's cool to me about it is that it was dope, and it's not done. Like they were like, yeah, we got a lot more testing to do on it, and I kind of got shivers from that. I was like, I was like, what else are you gonna get this thing to do? So. You know, kids are gonna buy it. I was gonna come home, do their homework for them. You know, it's gonna. It's like the TI eighty one or eighty three. Did they do Calculator. homework? Did no. they do laundry? Was that their? No. Was that their shtick? Not at all. So, do you wanna grab another one out of there? Sure. Catch up. Man, it's cold as kicking my butt. So this is Brayton. That's Brayton. Brayton. That's Brayton from MC Kydex, man. How do you say his last name? Damn. He's Hodus? He, he, the Hodus. He the Hodus. said it at breakfast one morning, and I was like, I don't know, brother. So, see any cool camo <clears throat> company? We Dude. stopped by Proper. We stopped by True Spec. Proper was There's... kind of they Proper. They were kind of like even they were kind of like yeah, it's sort of a bummer here for it. It wasn't bummer, but it was still like Cryptek was banging, dude. Yeah, they had some stuff. I snuck over there. I'm not a big fan of Cryptek, but I was like, I'd look like a jerk in this. Yeah. But probably the coolest thing we saw as far as camo goes is probably the ATAX relaunch. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't necessarily the camo. It was more of the the BDU because uh, they actually had like a combat shirt, but it had you know it had Velcro, but for the pockets it had button you know buttons instead of Velcro to release them. Uh, it had different was, types of zippers and extra pockets, and it looked really awesome. That mannequin was wearing an extra large. I should have just, just stole it. I should just, you know, lights out, you know? Whoosh. So, but yeah, I'd say that that is probably the best. Uh, so True Spec has some pretty cool things coming out uh, in the line of that. And also a new pair of, have some sort of new tactical pant coming out too uh, that looked really nice too. Yeah. So. All right. Ooh. Uh, littered with BB says more on Sig MCXs. Mm. So Sig just like kind of pulled like a like a weird but cool move where they sort of pulled their licenses from a lot from like all the different gun companies. This is like what month ago maybe. Maybe. Ooh. 
Um, and they started SIG Air. And we got to see, like, a highlight of that. Um, what did you think of it? Well, they had, so they had the MCX. They had <clears> the <throat> SIG M19 or M17. I can't remember which one. And then they had the 229. Uh Overall, I mean, the MCX is a VFC. Uh, really cool. They only had one variant of it. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, where's the other variants? So overall, I mean, it's a VFC. Build quality looks really nice. They said that they're releasing, I think, end of March, April. You should have it frame. just in time for season. So Yeah, so we're going to be carrying them. Uh, the pistols look really cool. They have CO2 and green gas ones available. And obviously the MCX is AEG. Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely look good. So, Justin Mahoney, he says least favorite item or items of Shot Show. My least favorite item of Shot Show is probably the neighborhood that we stayed in. Oh yeah. But uh, but real talk, it was probably no man. Yeah, that's that's hard because there it was. Like, a week filled with, like, cool stuff. Yeah. A proper, probably. Yeah, proper didn't have too much new. They, the, the boots were cool, but, like, yeah. not too cool. Not cool enough. So, yeah. Proper. I'd say, I'd say proper. Josh McNeil, MC Cadex. I want to hear about... I want to hear about the new pistols. The G&G &G pistols. Well, specifically, we went over those. Yeah, we already did that. Already, one. so. Let's go through that. Oh, this is a bust. The only other, like I said, the only other pistols are like the SIG pistols, uh, which we just went over. The Elite Force. The Elite Force pistols, which, like I said, Glocks out the wazoo. They have the longer style Glock, the 19X, uh, 17, and all variants, including C CO2 and green gas. So those are cool. Um, KWA pistols, I think they have most of the same. And that's really it. So. Um, I'm... I'm going to sort of have to translate this one a little bit. It's uh, Alex, uh, Alex uh, Kapischke. How do you think the quality of the new in-house guns will compare to the likes of tried-and-true brands like Umarex and KWA? And will their quality be better or subpar or on match with them? So what Alex is asking is how do we feel, you know, like companies like SIG starting to, you know, announce their own lines of airsoft guns, how will they compare to, like, specific two airsoft companies? And so for that, I say that, you know, um, I think they'll do just fine. I think a lot of, there's like a weird crossover right now going on between, you know, the gun world and Airsoft. Um, for instance, Umarex owns Walther. Mm -hmm. You know, that's sort of like a backwards step a little bit, some would say. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that's coming out is going to be a little proprietary for a little bit. But, you know, for the most part, it'll start sinking into the norm that everybody's used to. You know, they're going to get cooler kits and going to be able to do a little bit more with it. I was going to say, for the most part, like, whenever, say, like, SIG goes to companies to bring their own brand, <clears throat> they do their research and they find out, like, oh, who makes the best one of these? Or in this case, you know, VFC is already making the MCX. So they went to VFC and it's like, hey, can you make this for us? We'll license this for you and use our trademarks and stuff, and then we'll sell it in the U.S. Same with their pistols. So, like, they're going to brands or companies that already make them. So I believe, you know, their pistols are probably going to be, you know, a high-end equivalent of, you know, whoever makes pistols. They're going to be fresh. They're going to be cool. Yeah. And so work with I think they, they do their due diligence. It's not like they're actually manufacturing them themselves. They're outsourcing and then using their licensing to say, oh, hey, this is ours. But really, we just got someone else to make it. So I think they'll be, yeah. I think they'll be on par, you know, mm -hmm. maybe even better, depending. Okay. So next one, Tom Sarasso, again. Uh, what are some of the things you guys say that you definitely want to get into the shop? So, a couple things off that list. We have the Odin Transformer, definitely. PTS, um, 200 round mid cap, definitely. Probably those PTS helmets. Like maybe no, yeah, the helmets. Those. PTS has helmets coming yeah, out. Yeah, um, would be cool. Definitely, uh, definitely, maybe. Maybe one of those, the GMR packs, one or two of those. We might see about bringing those back in. Um, if there's, like, the demand for it. Um, uh, definitely some of the stuff that was, you know, 
from from Elite Force. The the striker, the shorter version oh, yeah. of the striker. What is it? The so M we have all the M12, Glocks coming. M12, the striker, the shorty striker. Yeah, um, the R eight would be cool to get. Um, definitely, like a lot of a lot of stuff that you know we saw from a lot of our standard brands. Um, maybe some of the Lancer Tactical. Uh, they had some stuff there that was pretty cool. Yeah. So they have, um, I guess they had their polymer M two four nine. Yeah. Sort of look good. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we're going to start working with a night vision company to offer rentals for events we go to. So that's sort of a we're in, big we're thing. talking about it right now. So working for that and and um, there's something else too. There's a lot of stuff, and I can't remember. Uh, oh, Tipman, for example, we are bringing in their full color or their their complete tan guns, like their Commando series. So that'll be something. Uh, PTS Rels, I actually have an order going out here shortly uh, to get all their like wedge lock Fortis Rels because the price has dropped on them significantly. So now you can get that type of Rel for like eighty dollars or something like that, eighty or ninety. Um, I think that's really. There's some stuff yeah, that we're sort of like as it of. as it pops off, we'll see what prices are, and then sort of snake what we want here and there. Um, to be honest, you know, one of the things that a lot of people sort of expect from Shot Show is for the stuff to be out now, or you know, like I know a lot of people expected you know stuff to we were able to purchase stuff there, but that's not the case. So like we do have to wait a little bit for things, and we have to see you know how trends are going to change. So some of the stuff that we think is like super cool that we'd want to see in the shop might not make it because you know in a in a month everybody will be using bow and arrow airsoft guns you know just you say oven mittens oven mittens dude yeah, so okay so is it my okay. turn or is it your turn yeah go ahead so next question jacob tetter any price range on the Lancer Tactical HPA 50 Cal HMG? No. I, didn't I did see it. see it there. We didn't really talk to Lancer Tactical. Yeah, they were they were super busy. And there was a guy on that live stream. I was like doing a live stream, and then a guy like stepped right in front of me to do his. And I was like, brother, what the hell, man? But that's pretty cool. I did see I did see it on the table. I thought it was just a prop, a prop essentially, yeah. but I guess not. So that's pretty cool. Um I'm assuming they're going to use their new HPA system they've been working on. So we'll see how that goes. Secret squirrel action yeah. with that. So. Awesome. All right. I would say it's probably going to be pretty cool. Yeah. As long as it's not too expensive. Oh, I got two here. here. Do you want that one? Sure. It's more time. I'll do this one. Go for it. G Software 5556. What are the requirements to go to SHOT Show? Uh, so, okay. This was actually, it was funny how we got into SHOT Show because we're a dealer and you have to pay to be a dealer. Yeah, so there's three different tiers. There's obviously exhibitor, media, and then a standard dealer. Yeah. So. so, and then there's also like, you can be like rival competition sort of seeing like what the norm is picking up. So I guess that sort of categorizes. There's yellow, red, and green. That was how it yeah. sort of like boiled down. And then there was blue, which I couldn't figure out what that was. Oh. There was like this weird blue sect. But um, the way that we did it, we, because we have the website, because we have Instagram, um, because we have the YouTube, we, when is media? And then when we got there, well, the way that we had to do it, like we put our initial one in and it wasn't good enough. We had to do something else. And then, so we went through the website and if you look at our website where it has like all of our, um, staff, all of our crew. staff, it's like sort of like, well, like goofy bios, you know, about like us actually. And then you get to like Kurt, Andrew, and I, and it's like, Chris has a bunch of, like this very serious bio because we sort of were like, yeah, we want to be taken seriously to go. Yeah. And that was sort of like what we had to do. It's it's very, um, it was a lot harder to get in than I thought it was. Yeah, going like to. if you're going just as a dealer, it's not that bad. It costs like 25 bucks. Uh, you just have to have your business license, prove that like you're in business, and that's pretty simple. Uh, however, if you want to do media, you have to prove that you have a media presence because there's only so many slots for them. So with us, like we had to prove like, oh, you know, we have a YouTube channel, 
we you know operate a blog of some sort uh we operate a website have different types of like social media outlets and the people that we have going are i guess have that type of job title at work so we had to like prove that oh you know the three of us are actually here for media uh, so once we got all that together and did the application and all that stuff, it, it was actually not too bad. We do have some friends that didn't get approved, uh, whereas we did. So that's sort of cool. And then so obviously, that. yeah, exhibitor, that's where, you know, it's a manufacturer, they buy a booth and that's super expensive and that's what they do. So, uh, as far as like an everyday person, they don't allow it. So, and actually even, even still like there was a distributor or a table booth that got shut down because they were selling like $3, something ridiculous. Like literally, oh, here's a $3. Space like, pencils or something. I think it was like a measurement device yeah. for something. And they shut them down. Uh, so like literally that company paid like, I think one of our vendors was saying it said 150000 Yeah, 150000 It said like, it was like a big booth and it got shut down for $3. Yeah. So they're very, very serious about that. Like you're not allowed to buy anything. You can place orders. But as far as like trading money right there, first things, it's you're no also no. not allowed to take pictures. Yeah, unless you're media. Unless you're media, and they busted a couple people, like escorted out. Oh the yeah. Door. So they're pretty serious about that. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's the requirements for it. Uh, Tom Sarasso asks, uh, "What was your favorite real still thing you saw but didn't post about?" The Kimbers, man. I didn't see the Kimbers. Yeah, I kept being like, let's go see him. And you were like, we were like, we got other stuff we got to do. I was like, uh -huh. I'm like, you got other stuff to do. I, I, I like, it was that and it was the Team Wendy stuff. See, for me, I, the M14, Voltor M14. Oh, yeah. But I posted about it though. So, yeah. So that, that automatically disqualifies. Dude, mm. that's what you get for, yeah. for. I'm trying to think. What else? I, mean, I did get to see some of the grenade launchers and 50 cals and whatnot. Those were cool. Always cool. Oh, actually, um, coolest thing I got to see was the at the night vision booth. We got to check out the the rental units, like the dual tubes. Um, they're like a hybrid unit that are really nice. They're white phosphorus, and so we got to talk him a good bit. So the cool. uh, I'll say you know this is sort of a part of the question. Two two things I saw. One was the weirdest thing I've ever seen was the bullet shovel. And it was, if you make so many bullets that you need a shovel to get it, it's like this thing where you can like, and then you take it, and then you shake it, and then all the bullets sort of like filter into the box. Oh, like cool. in order. That was kind of cool. It was weird. But the most terrifying thing was that like serial killer-esque, like, hook a deer up to the back of the oh, car no, and pull God. the thing off all oh. at once. It was, a, oh, it was, we were like walking down the aisle. And you guys was just... was the Tittman booth. No, no, it wasn't. No. no, it was farther down. It was the other side. And we're walking down the aisle, and you guys just stop, and you're like, you gotta watch this. And I watched it, and then just, like, a guy's like, here you go, whap. And it was, like, something out of Hellraiser. It just... Whoosh. Yeah, they... And you were like, where's all the blood? <laughs> yeah, it was like a... They were skinning a deer, so they had this, like, device that... It was like a ball and hinge, almost, but they, like, you know, cut the deer where they needed to put this thing over their skin and it was like a ball and it like went up in and then like clamp clamped it and then they hooked it to the back of a truck and literally just like, oh, we're moving forward and just like ripped the like skin off of this oh, deer. It was, and it was like, okay. It was so, so it was very efficient. I'm yeah. surprised that was a thing, but I'm not much of a hunter. I'm sure hunters out there would really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, it was, for me, that man. was like watching a train wreck happen. Like That's a big like, oof. So. so, Yoshi, Yoshi chestnut. chestnut. That, that said, took a bit to. I yeah, it said Yoshi's chestnut. It was like Yo Shik chestnut. Um, did you guys go to the Tagen booth? If so, what products were you most excited excited about? So that's Sadly. a bummer is that we were like, oh, we'll do it at the end of the week, and then because we sort of like snaked our way around the the um, <coughs> building. And then by the time we got there, they were gone. Yeah, like we did so. get to stop. They were at Evike's booth, so we were there. We checked out everything else, but then like Evike was having a meeting, and I didn't even see the tag and stuff. And I think and after watching a video later uh, of a, somebody else on Instagram, I saw that it was behind where they were having the meetings. But I, I think they packed up and left. So you know, essentially, we shot show was Tuesday through Friday, 
and we had a lot of our stuff set up, you know, Monday or Tuesday through Thursday. And then Friday we were trying to catch up and do like anybody we missed. And they were one of them. And like I said, they were gone. Slept so. on it, man. Slept on it. Okay. So well, next I, question. I have one more too. Okay. Okay. Senpai67, what do you think about the new HK416 and Mark 18 PTW? So, okay, were, are they talking about the actual or are they talking about, because there were a couple different companies that had the this HK416. Is well, no, because there was two. The, there was the two Deltas that came out literally at the same time. But not the PTW, though. He's talking, so this is specifically so referring this is specifically to us for going to Z-Shot okay. and him talking about it. So the 416 was dope. Was. My my biggest issue is just like they're so like you're not it's not like you're not paying for what you get but they're so expensive. Oh the MP the PTW well actually these were going to be if I'm not mistaken he said it was like in the thirteen hundred to fourteen hundred dollar price range maybe less for these because that was his thing it was a re it, instead of so instead of them using. System of parts, they were using some other higher end parts that were cheaper. So they were assembling both of these rifles for less than you would typically get a normal system of four. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, so it's, it's, I mean, you're getting a good price for what you're getting, but that's three months of my rent right there. You yeah. Know? That's like PTW takes a special, you know, yeah. if you're looking for a PTW, like those two, like the Mark 18, the HK416, those ones are gonna be, I guess, a pretty good bang for your buck because they come with those upgrade parts, yeah. they come with the body, they come with you know everything you want on them. Whereas if you bought, say, a normal PTW and then slap those rails on it and everything, like you're talking like over 2,000 plus dollars. So, so but yeah, with the, the HK416 and Mark 18, they're definitely some really nice contenders. They looked amazing, they felt great, and I personally like them. I'm not a PTW fan, but like they did look nice and they came ready to go. So yeah. that was cool. Um, I got one that was sent in last minute, but I thought it was a really good one. So um, Matt asks, hi Amped, as an Airsoft retailer, did you feel, did you, as an Airsoft retailer, how did you feel that impacted your interactions at SHOT? How did your interactions vary between Airsoft distributors and gun manufacturers and tactical gear manufacturers? Also, did you feel that the airsoft industry was a welcome addition to shot or not? So, okay, it's a little. Basically, what he's asking is like, did we felt? Did we feel? Do we feel like we were being blown off by actual gun companies? Absolutely not. I think I, I think it's like one of those things is that like this airsoft is different than what it was twelve years ago. People take it more seriously. You know, you have people using it for. We we were using the GBLS. And he was saying that, you know, NYPD uses them for training guns. It's like the only thing that NYPD uses now. So, yeah, there is a little bit of, like, user sort of, like, issue. On the user end, yeah. But as far as, like, manufacturer to manufacturer, like I said, you know, a lot of companies are starting to pick up actual gun licenses and vice versa. So I, I really – I actually had – Gun manufacturers that were coming up to me and being like, oh, you do airsoft. Like, can you tell me, like, more about this than this? And I was like, sure, you know, like, that's cool. Because it's, you know, a market, it's, a, it's, it's another market to get into. And, you know, with sort of the way that, you know, the gun topic is in our country, they, it's like they sort of want to want to keep going in different directions so that they can always stay on top of, like, that market, you know. So I felt like we were welcome with open arms, to be yeah. honest. And a lot of people don't understand, like, when you look at SHOT and when you go there, you're like, oh, I want to go see the Airsoft stuff. There's literally, like, not that much there. So, like, most of the SHOT show is real firearms. And then you have, like, one hundredth of it is Airsoft. And it's Maybe all integrated, too. Yeah, and it's like... There's no, like, section. Yeah, so, you know, we could be at, like, say, the Elite Force booth and then have to go all the way across the convention center to the other side just to go see, say, Tipman or ASG. Uh, like, there there weren't that many, you know? Like, I, I believe literally Vulcan, Elite Force, Wolverine, Polar Star, G&G, ICS, ASG. 
There's uh, a lot more than you'd think, but it yeah, was like... Yeah, like there's a good many representation, but I mean, you're talking probably less than 50 to 60 companies-ish. Yeah. You know, maybe there's some more in there. I mean, we were popping... There was people that were popping around that were part of the industry. Like yeah. I saw, you know, I saw Milson Media was there and, and Jet and Leah and... You know, we saw like Warren, we Josh saw, Warren, yeah, uh, and um, Bubba was there. John Liu was from there. And John Liu, yeah, um, from Lion Claws. Th there was, you know, there was like a lot of people that were in Airsoft, but it, it just it's not it's not an Airsoft, you know, con, but it's it's like Airsoft is the gun industry's little brother, so you know they let us hang out sometimes, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, so. so. But yeah, that's our that's our last question. Um, Kurt and I are gonna go uh, probably cough ourselves to death in our offices or go get more Taco Bell. Taco you know, Hell. One way or another. But um, yeah, uh, you know, just a sort of heads up. Um, we're gonna have a vlog coming out. We will be at Trench Knife. Um, this will probably be out by the time we've gotten back from Trench Knife, but. Uh, you know, keep an eye out for some gameplay footage from that. Um, keep an eye out for some of the other events we got going on this month. Uh, I know February is sort of the hotness. Um, I personally will be at Milsim West at the end of the month. Um, we have our next uh, Still Town Paintball demo days. game. Or yeah, not demo this days. This one's not demo days, but it'll be our, I guess, first non-demo days there. And that is Saturday or Sunday the 24th of February. So... And actually, what's cool about that, he actually built a ton of stuff already, so he's already making changes. Uh, so that's awesome. Um, so hopefully we'll see some of you guys there. If not, maybe we'll see you at Milsom West. Uh, maybe we'll see you this weekend. Well, the past weekend before you watched this, or, yeah, after after you probably saw us or whatever. So uh, what else is going on? Not a whole lot. You know, um, we'll be at SS Airsoft probably at the end of next month and, uh, you know, popping up. Couple of different places. Yeah, lots, lots, and lots of connections came out of Shot Show. Got to talk to a whole bunch of people, meet a bunch of you know industry people. Had a um, really big pancake. A big know. pancake hash house has some massive stuff. Really good. Uh, shout out to as, shout out to Mario from the uh, from the lobby bar at the oh, Excalibur. Yeah, yeah he was cool. Uh, <laughs> the only other thing uh, we did sort of a little product announcement here. We did just bring in the Max Hops last ass stand. They are phenomenal. We had, like, we sold out of them. I had got more in. We just got them, and then we got the LED version of it. Sold out completely. Just placed another order today. Those will be here probably by the time this video is up. Uh, so definitely grab those while they're hot. I'll try to keep them in stock as much as I can. Got tracer units on the way. Actually, I think they just arrived uh, today, which is Wednesday. Um, yeah. There's a lot of cool things coming. Just keep an eye on it. And if you guys ever need anything that we say or have out of stock, don't be afraid to email us to ask for an ETA. Uh, we could even special order it in for you if we don't plan on getting in, it in anytime soon. So, but yeah, I think I think that's it. So don't forget to uh, you know follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Yep. Oh, we did start Pinterest too. So we do have a Pinterest account now. So feel free to pin us. If you and want to see how we decorate our apartments. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Lots of as always, make sure to, you know, if you like this video, like, subscribe, uh, hit the little notification bell thing so you know what's going on. Smash that eggplant react only. Oh, God. No. So. And then on top of that, make sure to leave comments down below uh, if you have questions for next time because we will pull questions from there. And to everybody that has put questions up, thank you very much. Really appreciate your support and hope you guys have a good week. We'll catch you later. Pew, pew. Thank you.